Hi, in this video we're gonna talk about character design and workflow for hand painted 3D models. This video is going to be somewhat more of an overview of the process and if you have more questions I'll be more than happy to create a separate video or answer all your questions down below. While many artists use other digital techniques to create their models, there is something truly special about this method. So let's dive in and learn all about how to create a unique character with some tips and tricks to help you get the best result. Along the work, I'll show you some references like these of some incredible examples of hand-painted models in action from video games and other means. This video is going to consist of four independent parts. We go through sketches, initial rendering, character modeling, and painting. This technique can create a unique stylized look that is hard to achieve through other digital means. So let's learn together and see the beauty and creativity that this technique can bring to your project. Part 1. Sketch Development Initially at the fast stages, you want to find some good high quality references, and for that, you're best off using ArtStation or Pinterest. I use both, here are some of them on the side of the drawing, and if you would like to take a better look, make sure to pause the video and inspect. The best advantage of Pinterest is its ability to suggest and curate some more themes, which is going to help you come up with mood boards and is just generally quite useful. Once you find your references, start sketching. Be very loose, try to think of form and create interesting eye-catching shapes. I went for exaggerated, elongated body look with some wide shoulders and long legs with some narrow waist. What I'm trying to do here is to create some focal points like spiky shoes, shoulders, head helmet and just trying to get your attention away from random armor paneling. Additionally, at the end I just added a skirt or a kilt. At the very end, try to exaggerate, try to be very loose but make the shapes flow together. Finally, I will add some grey to the sketches to see how it's going to turn out and do I like the shape against the white background. This is going to help me just to figure out do I want to change anything or keep it as it is. Part 2 Sketch Rendering At this stage we're trying to make the character look the way that we wanted for the final stage. To help us with that, it's good to keep in mind the most basic principle of color and composition. Here I'm going to go safe, as it's something that I'm comfortable with and I think can provide the best result for me. Don't be scared to alter some shape, make artwork speak for itself, even in a simple case like this. Use Oikofy as much as you need and redraw certain areas if they're not working out for you that well. As this is later used to create a 3D character, use it for your advantage. Make details very detailed so you don't have any questions of how things are constructed or going to look like in the 3D model later on. Go as detailed as possible without wasting too much time. Keep a constant eye for references and try to use already existing ideas and adapt them to your painting. You don't have to reinvent anything. If you want to use certain armor, certain pattern, try to take it and see how you can incorporate it into your work. As drawing becomes more complicated, I go and redraw certain parts or even scrap some ideas. Wow, it feels bad, it's okay. We can always come back to them in our next work, so let's not take it too serious. There's always more work we can do later. Time. I wasted around seven hours on this drawing but could have been much quicker if I just went with it. Don't be scared to make mistakes, just produce more art. Lastly, mirror. Certain parts of this painting are just mirrored. There's no shame in that, just saving time. Use mirror, then liquify, and lastly, redraw to correct lighting information and shadow. And lastly, just finish it. If you don't like certain parts, it's okay. Always try to finish work and move forward with the process as otherwise you're going to get stuck. Part 3. Base Model The main idea of this stage is to create basic shapes that matches the overall silhouette of our character. We'll start with a simple shape, try to model match it by eye. Notice how we're not worrying about any small details at this point, we're just trying to get the overall shape right as we're going to paint the details on it at a later stage. 
here I'll show some of the references I looked at as they have good understanding of the mesh. Some of the images that I showed have both state, wireframe and textured. And that helps a lot to understand how to model certain parts and how detailed you have to be. For the rest of the modeling, we'll use the reference image that we painted before to guide this and create the model. Remember, we are working with a low poly mesh, so we don't want to worry about adding too much detail. There isn't much more really to this step. It's always nice to have a T-pose drawn beforehand, so modeling goes smoother, but we're trying to save as much time as we can, so can sometimes skip that stage. Part for painting. We start the step with some experimenting in Substance Painter, but we quickly abandon it and just extract the normal map and ambient occlusion, as the texture is not giving the results that I wanted. After that, we load it into 3D code, and at first I'll just block in the colors, but afterwards I'll start painting it over. Most of the painting, however, is actually done in Procreate or Photoshop. Here I'll just speed up the process and show at the end how the model looks again. For the future, I'll record a more detailed look at the steps as you can make it much more of a 2D workflow than a 3D. And that gives, in my opinion, a quite unique perspective that you don't really get with all 3D model painting. I hope this video was a good introduction and if you have any questions, as usual, I'm more than happy to answer them if you leave them right below.